Hello and welcome back to NetAssassin Videos. So, uh, please help uh, us out and subscribe, and by us I do mean me. And uh, this is the first in a two-part video uh, showing you how to create a VPN tunnel between Google Cloud Platform and your, um, your PFSense firewall. In this particular case, uh, with all GCP uh, instances, we actually will set up a VPN per uh, project that you set up inside of GCP. Chances are, if you're just a regular normal person, you probably only set up one, but do understand if you set up multiple projects, and I'll kind of cover that uh, a little bit more here as we go through, you'll have to set up a new VPN for each one if you wish to actually have a site-to-site -site VPN. Why do that? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably figured it out. Maybe you just want back-end connectivity, and you do not wish to have your GCP uh, project uh, open to the internet at all, or you wish to hide all backend connectivity like SSH and other admin ports and certain backend pieces like maybe your Hadoop cluster and so forth uh, from being accessible by the internet, and instead you only want it to be accessible from your local area network through a VPN tunnel to its private non routable IP addresses, which by the way are statically assigned to the machines whereas the external IP addresses are ephemeral. So, all that said, let's go through these settings. Uh, to get here, we're just gonna basically pop up here, we're gonna go down to networking, we're gonna click VPN, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new VPN connection. Really quick, we're gonna say, okay, here's VPN two, um, because I already had a VPN one, and you can rename this anything you want. Uh, do remember you're going to be restricted to the very tight constraints of Google's naming for everything. We're going to give it a description. Uh, maybe it, in this case we're going to call it uh, connecting GCP to my house. I have created a subnetwork uh, for this particular project. Uh, the reason I do this, and I do this for every project that I build, is so that the non-routable, in other words the RFC 1918 addresses, uh, don't overlap. If you simply generate a new platform uh, project uh, within, um, within GCP, what you will quickly find is if you've generated it in the same region as one that you already have, they will actually have identical non-routable IP ranges, and they're huge, it's like a stroke 16. Um, so what you can do is you can create a new sub-network, like uh, some 24-bit, uh, and you can create multiple 24-bits if you wish. And then once you've done that, you can then delete the massive 16-bit. The reason that I'm pointing this out for the VPN is if you're doing this to multiple ones, uh, if they had overlapping uh, remote networks, you'd have to do all kinds of NAT traversal uh, on that IPsec tunnel. To make your life a little bit easier, and usually also to make the lives easier of your end users, uh, go ahead and create a new subnet. In this case, I named my new subnet Skunkworks LAN, and it is a 24-bit subnet, and we'll see that a little bit later. The region is US Central, and that happens to be exactly where I built uh, this project inside of GCP. Then we have the IP address, and this is the IP address of the virtual VPN concentrator that the system uh, has already built for me. I could always just say new static IP address and it will generate a new one for me, but there really is no use. You can keep reusing the one that's there. It can contain multiple connections to multiple other networks. And again, that's for the phase one portion. Tunnels. Okay, remote peer IP address. This is going to be the IP address of your PFSense. This is going to be normally your WAN interface. If you're a very sophisticated user, chances are you went about and you created multiple external interfaces and one of them is potentially used just for IPsec VPNs. But in like 99% of the cases, this is simply going to be the WAN IP address of your, of your PFSense box. You get to pick your IKE version, um, which is like saying, why would I want IKE version 1? I don't know. You really don't need it. It's also not so secure. Pick IKE version 2. Uh, you'll see later in my video for the uh, PFSense, I just tell you to leave it on auto. If you really wanted to, you could just set it to version 2 um, if you've set this to version 2. Uh, just makes life a little easier. 
shared secret. This is literally the password that gets passed between both VPN concentrators during the setup of phase one. Make this the same as you've made the other one. In the other video, I will make it six X's. I think I actually make them six capital X's, which also reminds us it is case sensitive. Next, we have our static uh, routing options. We're going to leave it on static. Our remote IP address range. I've already put it in here for the remote network, 192.168.10-24. stroke Please put whatever you need in here. Don't add this if you don't really have it. Uh, maybe you are 10.10.0.024, whatever. But as you can see, you can add multiples. In this case, we're going to pretend the network we're connecting to happens to be this CIDR. Local subnets. This again uh, can work in one of two ways. We can uh, select the network that I've already created, which is this 24-bit network, the 10.252.252.024. And if you did that and click go, it would be nice and stick it in there for you. Or maybe we want to be a little bit more granular in this. And we want to say, hey, that's great that we have a VPN tunnel coming in. Right, uh, let's start with, I don't know, 100 and uh, call it a 29-bit, uh, right? So maybe we only want some of the IP addresses uh, to be accessible instead of all the IP addresses to be accessible. Chances are that's not what you want, and you want all of them to be accessible, and then the easier trick is just to do that or type it in manually and be happy with it. The only thing you have to keep in mind is this range has to be set as the quote unquote remote range on the other end. And this range has to be identically set as the local range on the other end. Otherwise, this phase two of the tunnel will not work correctly. At this point, we would click create and everything would be great. The only thing we have to remember then is to go into our rules in our firewall, which are located up here, and you're going to have to create firewall rules that allow devices on this network right here to talk to devices on this network over here. If you don't do that, the phase one and phase two will be established, but packets will get stopped at the firewall, uh, which resides just on the other side of that VPN tunnel. Do also remember you have to do the exact same thing on the PF Sense. That's just good networking. Hope this helps. Leave comments below. Thank you.